Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. So I actually kind of need to go to bed now but I thought I would as a bit of a celebration share with you another revision technique because I know that you love these videos and I really do enjoy making them but I just never really get around to it. So I thought I would just make you a short one today and let me tell you what we are celebrating. Ah, this, this crazy thing. That is Ruby. That is Ruby Granger's face on the front of the Times, the Times 2. And right, look at this, front page, there is a double page spread about revision youtube like what like what the hell is that there's me look at me there looking great i mean it actually makes me laugh because i feel like it's not the most representative photo of me ever i mean it's a photo from before i started my channel and i'm wearing makeup which i don't really wear but what the hell like honestly this is the biggest honor ever to have my name and my face in the times with an article that I love about me and two other people that I really greatly admire. I could not have asked for two best people to share this amazing little moment with, so shout out to Ruby and Eve. But yes, so today's revision technique is quite out of the box again. I don't think I actually got this off of anyone. I feel like I just sort of started doing it and I was like, this works for me. <laughs> I think it is especially good if you are a kinesthetic learner or a visual learner. I'd say I'm a mix of the two, which is probably why it works for me. And especially if you're creative, this is one for you. I'd also say it is best for uh, memorizing things or processes in science, but maybe that is biased towards the fact that I do biology and chemistry at A-level, so it's kind of what I use it for most. But I've also used it to learn maths identities. I could see how you could easily use it to learn quotes for English. Um, so yeah, I hope you find it helpful. Right, so the idea is that you come up with the thing that you want to learn. So the running example that I am gonna use in this video is the process of respiration. It's in AQA A-level biology, and quite frankly, I did not like learning it. I found it difficult to conceptualize and memorize most of it. Um, and I would say this is what this technique is perfect for because it takes a lot of time to do at first, this technique, but it's one of those things that gets in your long-term memory. So I knew, right Jade, you're not learning respiration very well. You need to break up the processes, simplify it and learn it. So I took the first process, glycolysis, and I made sure that I broke down the exact points that I wanted to learn. So to do this, I'd recommend looking at mark schemes, um, I would look in your textbook, look at your specification, because the last thing you want to do is learn and memorize something not to the exact way that you're gonna get marks for it. So you wanna make sure that you're learning it in the best way. And now I'm just gonna give you a demo of the technique because I feel like it's a really hard one to, to explain and describe, so cue the demo. So first we have glucose. It's the worst G ever. But okay, so we have glucose. So this is the start of glycolysis. Glycolysis G, we have glucose, easy to remember. Then glucose is phosphorylated. So there we go. I've drawn a little dot on there. That's how I know it's been phosphorylated. It's no longer glucose. However, I think, oh, look, there are two points on the glucose. So there we go. But the fact that there are two phosphates shows it's been phosphorylated twice and using my classic A-level biology knowledge, I know that it has been phosphorylated by ATP being hydrolyzed to ADP plus PI. So that's just like extra knowledge that I would throw in, but this is like main diagram. So it's been phosphorylated twice, therefore two ATP molecules have been used. So now this is not glucose anymore. This is glucose phosphate. So you've got glucose, got two phosphate molecules, amazing. Glucose phosphate then splits into 
two triose phosphate molecules. Great, it splits. Triose phosphate means three carbon, so I know that glucose is a hexose molecule, six carbon. So this is just your three carbon triose phosphate and another three carbon triose phosphate. Then, fun times, remove an H. Remove an H. Oh, I'm not even sure that got in. But anyway, I removed an H and I removed an H. And again, using my bit of my knowledge from the process, it removes an H and it gives it to NAD. Yay. So, gives it to NAD, but it makes it NADH, reduced NAD. And now, all I do is make a bit of a V shape, a bit of a triangle. And the V shape means I know that it is now pyruvate like pyruvate, the V, I don't know, that's how I remember it. So it's now formed pyruvate. And in forming that, you've also formed four ATP. That's it. But then obviously because up here we use two ATP, we get four ATP. Then it's only net two ATP made in glycolysis. But yeah, this is just me going through slowly how I remember glycolysis. And now let me do it a few times for you just to show you more quickly how you would do it and how useful it is. So I have glucose at the start of glycolysis. Glucose is phosphorylated twice. I know that that just means two a ATP molecules have been used to form ADP plus PI. Then it's split, remove an H, remove an H, NADH, NADH, pyruvate, and form for ATP. Super quick again. Glucose, phosphorylated, splits, remove an H, remove an H, pyruvate. And that's sort of how quick you can start to make it because the more that you do this, you sort of just, you get to know what all the bits mean. You know the steps, you're learning the steps. Once again, start with glucose, phosphorylate it, split it, remove an H, remove an H, form your pyruvate. And because I know the process so well, I know that when I'm removing an H, I know that I'm just forming an ADH. And I know that when I remove the H here, I'm just forming the NADH. And I know that when I'm phosphorylating it, I'm using two ATP. And I know that when I form pyruvate, I've got four ATP being made. And if you have no idea what glycolysis is, like, who cares? It's fine, don't worry. It's more just using this thing to quickly remember the process. And because you've got two of the triose phosphate bits, you know that there's a pyruvate formed for each one. So sometimes, you know, you could even do that. But, oh yeah, pyruvate formed there, pyruvate formed there. Ba-bam. This is really similar to a technique that I have done on my channel before. You can find it up here. I might do a little info thing, um, which was assigning phrases and processes to objects. This is basically a more kinesthetic way of doing that because you are drawing it and also quite visual because you're like looking at it and it's like stimulating your memory. So for example, in my science exam, oh, they've asked me about glycolysis. Look at that. I can recite that for you pretty much. So I would just draw the first little bit of my little diagram, then write out in words what that bit of it means. Like, oh, glucose is phosphorylated using hydrolysis of ATP. Bam, bam, bam. So I do that little thing, write it out, then add a little bit more, write it out. And I don't know, it's just a great visual way for me of not forgetting bits of a process. As I say, it does come up with time to come up with some weird little creative picture effectively that you'll remember but just make it simple doesn't have to be fancy at all but the great thing is it will just get in your long-term memory honestly and it's so quick and easy to test yourself because so for example i have this little flashcard. this is literally just the process of respiration summarized so one day I might be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna draw this one out and then I'll just draw that out and I'll recite that bit of respiration, easy revision. I've got my little prompts here. I can look back at the diagram if I want to. And it's not a picture of what's going on. It's not a diagram as such. It is just a little memory trigger diagram. So yeah, I really hope this made sense in some way. I feel like it's quite difficult to um, explain I just sort of do it. If you didn't get it, please tell me. Um, I will happily do another little short video explaining it. If you'd like to see it in more context or see more things that I've memorized with it, um, 
let me know, I'll do that. Um, as I say, this is just a really quick video to give you yet another cheeky little revision technique that you can add to your bag of revision techniques. Oh, and if you hadn't gathered, um, I, had, um, I had a haircut and I had it straightened and it's sort of on its way out now. My hair's getting a bit greasy, but yeah, fun times. Please hit the like if you would like some more revision technique videos or if you found this helpful in some way. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I love you a lot and good night. <laughs>